I'd like to explain for you the derivation of the capillary rise equation. Capillary rise is an important phenomenon to understand if we want to understand uh, soil water movement, if we want to understand practical issues such as uh, salt buildup and evaporation in soils with shallow groundwater tables. So to get the concept, let's start by imagining that we have a capillary tube and it's immersed in this small reservoir of water which is at atmospheric pressure and we'll show the atmospheric pressure by this little upside down triangle. The water has risen in the capillary tube up to a height which we'll call H and the water where the water meets the tube there is a non-zero contact angle which we will call alpha for the contact angle and then the radius of the tube we'll simply call R so the diameter here is 2 times R now what we'd like to do is balance the forces that are acting on that interface so we want to balance forces just write that here we know that on that interface there is an upward force which comes from surface tension acting at the walls of the capillary tube adhesive forces there and then we know there's a downward force which comes from gravity acting on the water in the tube so we want to find expressions for these forces and then balance them and ultimately we want to find an expression uh, for H, our height of capillary rise. So that's what we will uh, set out to do here. The downward force, which I'll call FD, is given by simply the mass of water in the tube times the acceleration due to gravity we can replace that uh, with a volume expression it's the volume of water in the tube times the density of water times the acceleration due to gravity and we like to put volume here because we have, have a simple expression for volume and that volume is given by H the height of capillary rise pi r squared so that's the formula for a vol volume of a cylinder which has this height h which again we're measuring from the free water surface up to this height h okay and so then we just multiply by density of water and acceleration due to gravity now we have our expression for the downward force We also would like to write an expression for the upward force. Okay, the upward force is given by 2 pi r. That's the circumference where the interface, the liquid gas interface, is meeting the edges of the tube. So you imagine that, that's a circle, and it has a circumference given by 2 pi r. So 2 pi r times gamma, which is the surface tension, and cosine of alpha. Okay, so remember here, gamma in this case is our surface tension. And the cosine of alpha, as we have here, is necessary to calculate the upward component of the force. If alpha was zero, cosine of zero is one, so the upward component would, would be one. And when alpha is greater than zero, then the cosine of alpha would be something less than one. 
Okay, so now we have an expression for the upward for force and for the downward force. So we're going to then equate those together. I'll just clear this for a moment. And we're, we're going to be writing that the upward force is equal to the downward force. And we'll just plug in those expressions that we had. For the upward force, we had 2 pi r. That's the surface tension, which is a force per unit area, or force per unit length, sorry, acting on this circumference, 2 pi r. We'll multiply by cosine of alpha to get the upward component. That is equal to the downward force. When these are at equilibrium, we have h pi r squared rho w g. So if we just use some simple algebra and rearrange our equation, we can see that the height of capillary rise is given by 2 times gamma, the surface tension, times the cosine of alpha, which is our contact angle, divided by the density of water, acceleration due to gravity, and the radius of the capillary tube. So now we have this expression of the capillary rise equation. So one important lesson we learned from that is we have an inverse relationship between H, the capillary rise, and R, the radius of the capillary tube. Now, soils are not capillary tubes. You know that. But we can learn something about capillary rise from this simple equation. Soils have pores, and when the pores have small radii, so soils with small pores, R will be small, the capillary rise, H, will tend to be large. These will be fine textured soils. So fine textured soils tend to have greater capillary rise. As a consequence, shallow water tables can sometimes pose a greater threat in fine textured soils than in coarse textured soils because you get more capillary rise, and if the uh, groundwater is salty, then you can have uh, greater salt buildup near the surface for a given water table depth in a fine textured soil relative to what you would have for a coarse textured soil. In a coarse textured soil, the pore sizes are larger, so the effective uh, R value here, radius, would be larger, and the capillary rise is less. I hope that this uh, derivation and looking at the physics behind this equation helped give you uh, some better intuition and understanding about capillary rise, which is an important phenomenon in soil water movement.